Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to a brand new episode of We Got Issues. Um, I have uh, an amazing person in here. Uh, but before we talk to her, let me read out some of her accolades in here. And there is a lot. So uh, hang on to your butts, as uh, Samuel Jackson would say. <laughs> you know her from her widely acclaimed work on Dark Horse Comics 2015 Lady Killers. Uh, Allison Baker from Comic Sauce City said that uh, Lady Killers is clever, fun, and has a much potential to be a standout book and a standout it did uh 2016 lady killers was nominated for an eisner award for best limited series and in the same year she was also nominated for three categories best penciler inker and cover artist for the same book in 2015 to 2016 she also worked on marvel comics mockingbird spider woman scarlet witch and miss marvel in 2016, she, um, DC announced that she has signed an exclusive contract with the publisher. In 2017, DC announced that she would draw both covers and interior for the DC Rebirth version of Batman starting at issue number 33, making her the first female artist to draw covers, interior pages, and more than two consecutive Batman-centric issues in the character's history. We're not done yet, guys. Uh, in April 2018, uh, DC announced that she would write, draw a new Catwoman series. The first issue was released in July of 2018, the same day as Batman number 50, which predicted the wedding issue. In 2020, DC Nation presents DC Future State number one. She created and introduced the world to Yara Floor, an Amazonian of the Amazon who took over Diana Prince Wonder Woman's duty while she was gone and finally in 2021 of may netflix announced a film adaptation of lady killers to be directed and written by diablo cody better known for her writing credit for juno and jennifer's body and will be starring everyone's favorite actress in the last 10 years miss blake mrs blake lively ladies and gentlemen mrs uh miss joelle jones how are you today ma'am good how are you okay first things first is this do you ever stop? <laughs> that is, that is, that is a man four or five years consecutive that you're just kept going. Where, where do you, where do you find the energy to that? You gotta hustle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's, that's a lot of work too as well. I mean, after lady killers, I'm assuming that you were, you were just pursued by everybody, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. And no, I mean, it's, it's weird how it works. Like you, you get a bunch of emails and stuff and then um, something pops in your lap and then the next thing and the next thing. You know, right, just, right. And I've always had eyes bigger than my stomach. So right. it's hard for me to not get excited about projects. Right. And say no to them. So. Right. You're just on the phone like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. You hang up. You're like, me. <laughs> that yeah, kind like, of stuff. Oh, crap. When am I going to, when am I going to have the time to do this? I don't know why I agreed to it. Right, but, right. Yeah. Is it uh is it hard? I have always wondered about this with um, multiple writers that have multiple stories going on at the same time. How do you keep composure of like where did I leave off in this story and where did I leave off in that story? Like how did you uh, <laughs> how do you balance that out? I mean, like you personally, how do you balance that out? I don't know. I mean, I, I would love tips if you talk to somebody else that knows how to. Right. <laughs> I struggle daily, but right. I think. My situation, I was uh, lucky because I was writing for, uh, like, with Catwoman, an established character. Um, right. And then I would take breaks just to, like, mess around and play in my own playground and, and, and do my own thing, which, right. you know, I'm the only one that makes the rules. So mm -hmm. that's pretty easy. It was, you know, it's kind of like a, a pressure release valve. Right. Is is it is it hard to um, to balance out your creativity versus what the publisher would like to see kind of thing? Because I know that a lot of that's that's I, I've spoken to a lot of artists and writers and that's always been like one of those balance uh, balance thing. That's why I always use the example of the image seven and, you know, they didn't like the mm -hmm. way things. So they went off to the sunset and did theirs creative, uh, creatively. Like, uh, do you struggle a lot with, with that kind of stuff when working with a publisher? Um, you know, I think every book has its moments. Like there can be moments of complete and utter freedom mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, I'll look around and be like, is anybody even like paying it? Like, <laughs> yeah. like nobody's right, saying, right. oh. Uh, yeah. And then there'll be other times where like an event will come down the pike or something. 
and you're like, ah, oh, crap. Like, I have no idea how to put this in my story. And right. you, know, you just kind of have to be limber, I guess, and just kind of write it out wherever the right. book goes. Right. <laughs> um, I guess a lot of people would like to know, as always, is one of those things that I'm pretty sure, you know, just like everybody else, you're probably tired of answering. But how did you get started on the, on these kind of uh, on this kind of path? Did you did you start as a writer first that like you fell in love with the written language or did you fall in love with with art first? Absolutely art. I, I had no interest in writing whatsoever. Right. But I think I was making like I was always super into comics and I found my mm. comic book nerd friends in high school. And so right. to like f friendly competition, we'd make our own comics and just sort of hash it out and talk about it with each other. And um, yeah, I, mm. I, I had to write it then even right. now looking back. And then when I got into comics, I'm like, well, now somebody else can draw right. a file and I'm going to just draw. And I did for the right. longest time. And right. then I just kind of really got bored with the types of work I was getting offered. Right. Um, and so I was like, well, crap. Now I have to write again because right. nobody else is going to write the story that I want. Right. <laughs> yeah. So There's a means to an end. Um, right. And I didn't really have fun with it um, mm -hmm. because that shorthand, I guess, when you're when right. you're writing for yourself like i mm -hmm. don't write scripts um right. i don't know if i have one on my desk right now right. basically it's just doodles and like notes right and that's it. oh just kind of like points kind of pointers kind of stuff <laughs> right it's uh, <laughs> really messy <laughs> yeah I, i'm not i'm not creative enough to think of a story i i, I, I guess i'm like one of those uh populations where just like you know that's that's a nice story to do and then once you have a blank piece of paper in front of you i'm just like that's gonna happen <laughs> that's not gonna happen <laughs> i mean like uh what was your uh what was the first publisher that uh that ever um that that accepted your work because i remember when i was talking to uh todd mcfarlane he was saying that he sends and i believe this is like a notorious story he sends 200 uh 200 of his drawings everywhere <laughs> until just one answered him and i think that's malibu comics uh <laughs> how about you how was your origin story how, how did that come about like what was the first publisher that said yes to your work well let's see i I had just dropped out of art school. Uh, I was studying fine arts painting because mm -hmm. at that time there were no illustration or comic book classes available. Right. Um, and so I went for about three years, um, but the goal was always to do comics. Right. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I'll be able to use this knowledge somehow. Right. <laughs> and uh, there at some, point, at some point in time, you're going to be there. <laughs> that, was, that, that was your end goal. <laughs> Yeah, no, I will not be in like the finance <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> uh, but there, I was living in Portland, Oregon, and mm -hmm. there was a convention in town at that time. Like, right. it's not like conventions now. It was like in a basement. Yeah. Really like muddy. Cuddled. <laughs> right. And uh, my really good friend Sadika uh, really pushed me because she's like, I know you want this. There's a portfolio review. Mm -hmm. Um go and do it and, and and she really sort of pushed me out of my shell made me go stood behind me really creepy right. to make sure I wouldn't chicken out <laughs> I took my portfolio to uh David Mack uh who I really admired because he also sort of straddled that world of like fine arts right with painting techniques uh and that's how I was approaching comics and mm -hmm. you know I was a big fan of his and um he was absolutely lovely. He, he gave me so much of his time to go over right. my work. And he's like, you know, I'd like you to meet Diana Schutz, who's happened to be over there at the other table looking at. Wow. Me. Yeah. And she was like, editor in chief at the time at Dark Horse. Right. And uh, she gave me a job on the spot. Uh, on the spot. Wow. Yeah. That's was, awesome. Yeah. Um, so then once again, I had to go home and draw the thing and <laughs> figure yeah. that out. So since the, very, since the very beginning, Dark Horse has been really good to you. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, they've uh, given me a lot of opportunities. And, you know, mm -hmm. with like Lady Killer, I pitched that to another publisher. Mm -hmm. um, and it was rejected because they said they didn't know who would read it. There's no right. audience for this book. 
Right. Um, and I was just bitching and moaning about it to one right. of my friends at Dark Horse. Right. Like, hmm, are you going to do anything else with it? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you want it? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That, that's crazy. Cause like I've, I know that I, I spoken to Dan Mora before and he worked a lot with Boom Studios and they've been good to him too as well. And he was telling me that not a lot of people are taken by his art, the way his art style is, but nowadays that's what everyone's trying to do now right they're trying mm -hmm. to do that kind of stuff now well when when the publisher kind of treats you that well is it hard to uh give a story to another publishing company because you just want to you know kind of broaden your horizon kind of thing you know spread out your portfolio but you're thinking in the back of your head i'm like well they've been good to me so i might present it to them first like is that really hard to like just i want to go here first and without like offending them or anything like that yeah i mean i think it's a it's a, it's a tricky line but i think like as a freelancer mm -hmm. the idea and and all the people i've worked with are very lovely but the right. idea that i would trust a corporation right with my livelihood forever and just like go in on one right guy for the longest time mm -hmm. i stayed with dc a long time but i like to hop around and have good relationships mm -hmm. um in all of my working projects mm -hmm. um because i don't know shit can hit the fan any day like, yeah that's true yeah anything can happen uh, so you know i i just got to make sure that i've got places that i can work and and, and yeah uh, do a good job so that they hire yeah. me again um but yeah. i get very nervous uh, yeah. putting all the eggs in one basket <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you see yourself being more freelance than uh, being contracted to a uh, certain publisher yeah, absolutely. That's um, a lot more freedom kind of thing or Yeah, I well I've I was under my DC contract like maybe six years. Four six years. years, yeah. Yeah, so it's a long time. From what I read, I think it was six years, yeah. Twenty six yeah. it really was. And it was really great and they, they treated me really well. It was just um you know, that monthly grind just kills you. It's and a lot. Yeah, it's it, it's intense and like writing and drawing at the same time for a book that's going to be out next month and you can like right i have no idea what i'm doing i'm just trying to like keep right spinning I, I, I forgot who who's the artist who um who posted something i forgot who it was but they said that there's this ongoing battle between artists um in their head that you know when they're drawing something but they're not uh no one's taking in their work they always think to themselves i wish somebody can see my work and all that stuff but then once they're in there and in that industry i wish i can do more stuff that i like than actually <laughs> i actually just meeting deadlines i know that i was talking to um uh, Scott Williams uh, the other day and he was saying that he's just getting to that point where the grind is just a lot when you're doing mm -hmm. interiors interiors as well right so yeah how, how, how bad does it uh, how bad does it get when uh, when uh, when you do your own pencil and ink and I'm assuming somebody else does your coloring Yes, thank God. No, mostly, <laughs> mostly it's Jordy that does. It's Jordy Belair. Who's oh, she's amazing. A genius, yeah. Yeah, she's ah. she's brilliant. Her Red Lands run was just. Oh, I, I I love Red Lands with her and Vanessa Del Rey. Yeah. No, oh, every God. every time she says yes to a project with me, I just feel like I don't know why she keeps saying yes to me, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna exploit this. Hey, Jordy! <laughs> <laughs> Before she says no, <laughs> I have twenty pages. Could you? <laughs> how was uh, how was your uh, how was your run with uh, Catwoman? Because I know a lot of people have read it, and a lot of people uh, loved it too as well. But in in your point of view, when they said, "Hey, yeah, uh, here's Catwoman. I'll see you later," and you're just like, "Um, what do I do with this?" <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, well, I had pitched uh, a Catwoman idea to them. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I don't know. I'm a human being. I can't read all the Batman books. So of I had course. no idea what was going on with the leading up to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Or that they were going to get married, you know. Um, Is that so why they put you at 33 during that time for the wedding? So that you can get, like, a feel to what's going I on? So. I think so. I, 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 I once heard... Uh, that he asked for me to come on at a certain point, but I think mm -hmm. it was just sort of maybe get the readers used to me. Right. <laughs> way. right. I don't know. 
I mean, it was yeah. fantastic. Uh, I, I, I thought the, the rollout for that was great. And I had a blast working on those uh, Batman issues. It, it, um, it was a nice transition, actually, from from the wedding and then to the Catwoman series. It was yeah. a it was a really nice transition. Yeah. yeah. And, and by the time I was done, I was like in the groove with the character, you know, which is right. amazing. Because so I think, you know, for some artists, me. Right. <laughs> It right. takes a while to like figure out right. this character and kind of get your groove. I usually yeah. think like, issue three, two or three. Right. Yeah. You had amazing artists doing variant covers too. You had Stanley Archer doing your variants too as well. I, believe. I know. That was amazing. I was like, wow. It's so like a, cool. it was a nice compliment to the writing, uh, to the writing that you did too as well. So it was actually really, it was actually really nice. Like. Did you uh did you feel like you had to go back on some some history on Catwoman in order yeah. to just you know incorporate it somewhat? Yeah, I mean, well, I was coming from a place when I pitched them, I wanted it to be a horror book, right? Um, and I I had this grand scheme, which I'm sure, like I right. was new to writing, and I'm sure right. a more seasoned writer would have been like, oh, honey, no, <laughs> right, <not> right, <laughs> intention, sure. Right, my whole epic thing, and then uh, basically it was like Catwoman bringing her into the book, and it's going to start on a high, and then I'll, I'll break her down, right? Build her back up, sort of structure, and then I find out I'm getting Catwoman already broken down. She's left right. the roof of the altar, and I'm like, she's like, yeah, she just crap. left it there. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, and it was like, it, I was super busy doing Batman and trying to come up with ideas. And by the time I was finished with that last Batman issue I did, they're like, okay, mm -hmm. you don't know time off. Time, right. Go. Right. Uh, and then it was go, go, go. And so right. Right. <laughs> I couldn't go anymore. <laughs> was that much of a curveball? Like on the personal level as a fan, was that much of a curveball to you as it was for everybody when the wedding issue came out and, you know, they gave you Catwoman and you're just like, wow, this is amazing. They're going to get married. I have this idea. You start writing things mm -hmm. down. And then you read issue number 50 and you're just like, well, I'm just going to toss everything <laughs> out now. <laughs> Was that much of a curveball to you as everybody else? Like, you just don't know what, where to go from there after that? Well, it's funny. I, I had a little bit of a heads up, but we were doing like a, a, a press thing at right. San Diego Comic-Con for leading up to the wedding. And right. it's the first time I met uh, Tom King in person and and yeah. uh, it was like a breakfast lunch and so I'm like yeah. scrambled eggs and he just leans over and says, oh by the way I don't know if anybody told you but Selena Kyle's going to leave Bruce Wayne at the altar and I was like and he just keeps what? eating <laughs> <laughs> sips his coffee yeah <laughs> and then I start answering questions like I was excited for the wedding I'm like wait I have feelings to process <laughs> I want to see that video now you're probably just like yeah it's really nice I mean great they're getting married <laughs> 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 you're like oh my god because <laughs> right. like after the wedding issue i remember because um i used to have a retail store in miami and when that happens they're just like tim did you see what happened i was like i saw what happened it's like can you put Catwoman on my pull list <laughs> so Catwoman <laughs> became like a number one uh pull list because they wanted us to know what selena is going to be doing and what's going to be happening did you uh you, you when uh when did you leave catwoman or are you still kind of consulting a little bit on that kind of thing no i uh i what did i leave i have no idea i because <laughs> I, I think it was because i keep reverting back to um, I don't know why, but I, I keep reverting back to Stanley Archer's last Catwoman page. Which is, mm. I think it was number 21, 21 or 24. I'm not I'm not quite yeah. sure if that's. Yeah. yeah that, that's, uh, that was one of your last ones, too. Yeah. And I think I mean, I was basically ready for a break. I, the, you know, straight out of the gate working mm -hmm. on monthly comics. I've not really gotten that up. Like I've never done an ongoing where I wasn't writing, I never had that right. experience of right. doing monthly books. It was mm -hmm. so the grind was like extra surprising. It was like, oh, I have to right. write it abroad. I mm -hmm. have to do a cover, and right. things kept coming at me. And I was like, I just right. want to do like normal. For a were you time. were you doing anything in between, or were you kind of just writing things down in between, kind of thing? Uh, I was doing Lady Killer at the same time. 
uh, uh, volume that was volume two, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, then I finished that, and then I started working on story ideas for three. Right. Uh, yeah. So. It's so okay. Much. I see. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I've heard stories where it just gets a little bit too much. I, I know, I know that, um, I know that, uh, Tyler Kirkham and, uh, uh, I believe J. Scott Campbell, uh, they transitioned to doing covers because interior is just, just a little bit too much when there's a deadline involved. And, you know, I've seen, um, I've seen some documentaries with, um, with the image comics. And the only one thing that they should do is just, complete the deadline and they couldn't do that because it was just too much to handle so i i, I guess uh i guess what i'm leading to is that if somebody were to offer you um a whole series again would you do it again or you know you would just be like well i'll do it for a year and then maybe you yeah will see. i i don't like open-ended stories so much i love like beginning middle and end mm -hmm. sort of building to something and so the idea of like leaving it open-ended it's like a, a sneeze that never happens. <laughs> like it, it, you know, and it is. And, and drawing is so physically grinding as well. Mm -hmm. um, and to be physically exhausted and then have to have the mental capacity. Right. Uh, uh, it's a struggle when you, like, I wasn't prepared and I, I right. hope that in the future. Um, right. I think I definitely would like. A better schedule right right <laughs> but yeah if, if i could negotiate the schedule then yes i would absolutely do it again like a monthly book would be fine i guess yeah not not not, not like a buy or not a bi-monthly or something like that oh but... no <laughs> but like a, yeah i think uh just more, depending more on like your schedule. style of like i'm gonna yeah. give you like 40 to 80 pages right uh, like four times a year um, oh, that's what they do in uh, in in Europe. Something like that. Yeah, it's is it really real kush. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why can't it just like you know just give you a whole storyline for a whole year and then just you know grind it out for a full year and then release it the next the following year, right? I yeah. mean that would be a lot easier, right? I would love that. I think uh, you know an experience I never got to have either working mm -hmm. on monthlies was I never got any lead time. I never had issues in the can before I had right. to go. So. Um, right i think that if i even had like six months to prepare right um, it would make the experience different right now, now i want to i want to ask you this i know this is um this is widely known I, and there's probably some truth to it uh in the industry um when you guys do a yearly meeting with the writers and the artists do you guys plan everything out all at once and just go for it or do you guys just kind of go by ear when it comes to like monthlies because <laughs> <Wow. laughs> because you know as a fan we always say like oh why don't they do this and do that and then all of a sudden a couple of months later people are like oh they listen to me and like no they don't no. like it's already planned out <laughs> it's, it's i mean you have to take into consideration uh it's a room full of artists yeah so first of all it's like herding cats right um <laughs> there's no set structure like it's not even yearly it's random uh -huh. who's invited is random because they have like sometimes they'll have an idea so like you know oh right. uh, one of the ones like like their events like their their yearly big events, events. Like the summer events winter events yeah kind of stuff. and i think they're my first one i went down there and we're locked in this like hotel <laughs> meeting room. caged in <laughs> <laughs> You get yelled at by Dan to deal for like four <laughs> hours. Like, why, why are you guys fucking up? Can I swear? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you can't. You can't. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Like, why are you fucking up Green Lantern so much? I'm like, I don't even. I've never. <laughs> even, I don't know like, this is your idea, Dan. What are you talking about? <laughs> and it was like, there, he, he'll, like, he threw out ideas. And then we were properly dressed down and then we go home and then, you know, some, for me, at least something would always click afterwards of like, okay, mm -hmm. well, I mean, at least I got an idea of like what direction they want to go. Right. 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 Next year or this next big event, um, right. you know, and you know, you can choose to, I, I think it's kind of how <laughs> Yara came about of yeah. in a meeting and then, 
uh, he shouted about new characters. <laughs> I'm just, I just have this image of just him just yeah. busting through the doors. Why are you guys messing this up? He's like, it's your uh -huh. idea, boss. <laughs> that was, that was your idea. We're just writing what you ever, what's in your head. <laughs> I, I really liked it. I liked working with him a lot. I liked his, <laughs> I'm, but I'm sort of used to that. Like, uh, I'm from a really big family. I'm used to like a lot of big voices and chaos. Right, right. right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I flourished in this environment, <laughs> but he. Yeah, I, it was just, you know, I, I need a new Catwoman or a new Wonder Woman type character. Right. But she has to have a Pegasus. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so so the idea of Yara wasn't wasn't your idea. It was his idea, but you just kind of like, you know, created a character. You, <laughs> you, you, you were literally molding what she looks like and everything and all that stuff, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. His, his, his ideas cracked me up. It was... Um, well, she needs to be from Brazil. Uh, she needs a Pegasus and she needs a bola. And I'm like, so that's it. It's all I got. <laughs> you get, so, so essentially you oh, MacGyvered the whole thing. You were just <laughs> MacGyvering everything. You're like, okay, I have this, I have that. I'll make a person out of it kind of but, thing. I didn't think, I was just messing around at first. And then, um, mm -hmm. I started to really fall in love with her character. And I've been yeah. at, I've always been really obsessed with uh, uh, Heracles mythology. Like, I love Heracles, Hercules mm -hmm. stories. And I thought, you know... The mythology how, of it. Yeah. And, and, and I want... I love the idea that he's not... Like, he's got lots of flaws. And it, not just, like, killing his family, but... Right, right. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a flawed hero, and it's uh, his, his temper or his lack of seeing things through mm -hmm. and i feel like so many of the heroes are just these iconically perfect right things. and i wanted especially for a female character to have shortcomings right. uh because it's just you know it's boring if they don't like right rocky's i love the rocky franchise passionately of course and yeah it's he's not the smartest guy he's not yeah the best. exactly yeah that, that's that, i think that's why people were taking with rocky even though it and it didn't end the way hollywood ended uh that's why everybody loved rocky because you know he's a actual person has flaws and all that stuff and you can relate yeah right? and when he loses that fight in the first one you mm -hmm. cheer because you know his mutant ability was taking a punch Right, of course. And he just kept getting up and kept getting up, and like that's the kind of hero that I gravitate to. Like I really love that. Right, and and, and that's and that's kind of like the uh, the issue with Superman, right? Because Superman's too overpowered, and you try to put some humanity in them, and people are just like, "Why is he so emo? It's like, why is he so sad all the time?" It's like, what? What do you want then? <laughs> so, how did you? Uh, so Dan Diddle gave you, um, you know. Uh, a pin and a scissors to make uh, Yara. Uh, yeah. How did you? Uh... Brazil either like bolas aren't from Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bola. You're like uh, do your research. <laughs> I know, in a James Bond movie, I found out <laughs> where he's in Brazil and he somebody was using a bola. I'm like so, you all you know about Brazil is basically this James so you, Bond. So you're writing down <laughs> watch James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. So how did you, where did you get your inspiration then? So since he gave you just a hairpin and a clip, well, where did you get your inspiration? And like, this is how she's going to look. And this is the design of her, uh, her costume kind of thing. Yeah. I think for the design, I, I went through like 20 different costumes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's not really editorial, like I'll throw out ideas and they'll be like, ah, oh, I like it. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just was never like that definitive thing. I did the pants thing; and it looked mm -hmm. terrible. Right. Uh, but I, I just really wanted like that thing of when you see somebody like in a shadow or silhouette that it would be recognizable. So right. It should be pretty simple. Um, right. But then I can't help myself in like accessories of gold. Right. Um, right. right. But, <laughs> but I was really inspired by like. Um, right really fierce beautiful women that own their sexuality right um, like beyonce right. Uh, was a huge inspiration with like her stage costumes right um, 
and you know she looks fierce yeah. oh yara uh, biasi is yara oh yes please <laughs> yeah i would i would want i would really... <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. I'd watch that live action. Why not? Get on it, DC. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before before I, I we move forward a little bit more on Yara and the effects that she might had on in Brazil, the country itself. Um, what's it with the pants in the uh, in DC? Did they did they did Dan just yell at everybody, put pants on everybody kind of thing? No, or, I think it's I think it's maybe a Twitter thing. I <laughs> <laughs> like just put pants on everybody. I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah, like, some characters look great in pants. Yeah, and some don't. It should fit their personality. Yeah, because I mean, like, if you, I'm a big fan of New Fifty Two. Like, I love New Fifty Two. Oh, yeah. I, I thought New Fifty Two was groundbreaking. It was like the the best work that any comic book publisher has done. But they were there was just this obsession with putting pants on everybody. <laughs> I mean, like, even even Superman looked like Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> like, like with the jeans i'm like what's with the pants um do you um uh, as of right now i believe that there is a big effect that in my opinion yara when you introduce yara to uh to the country of brazil because for the most part a lot of dc stuff is being held in brazil mm -hmm. like a lot of presentation um you know i think that yara had something to do with that too as well uh what, why do you think that is? Like, why are they so gravitated to Wonder Woman a lot in that in the Brazilian culture kind of thing? You like, know, in, I, your, in your opinion, yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me to speak on. I, I was lucky enough to go to Brazil um, mm -hmm. and seeing the passion that people had for comic books. Because mm -hmm. at the time I hadn't done Yara and I was working on Catwoman. And um, it was incredible. Like, it was more... Mm -hmm intense and exciting than any show i've been to in the states like right they fucking love comics that yeah it was refreshing it was amazing right right and then, then do you get mobbed for the most part since you created Yara? <laughs> did you get mobbed when uh, you no, go to Brazil? I've never, I, i've uh i've not been invited back since i did yara so i might have no <laughs> and, that's a lie no you did not no i uh covid happens and uh right and i uh i don't get out much anymore so i think that's because yeah. I, th I think that um I i'm not quite sure if you've been to a lot of conventions since covid then but there's a lot more yara cosplays out there than the traditional yeah. wonder woman nowadays i don't know if you noticed that i've seen some really incredible yaras and it's just so I mean, you get, I mean, I think when you're a creator, sometimes, you know, the grind and you get jaded and uh, right. another convention, another plane right. ride, another hotel. And then right. to see that, I'm like, I'm back in it as a fan of like the right. wonderment, boy, the excitement of like right. that, the coolest thing. Right. Yeah. You yeah. see, you see, you see your design. You're just like, that looks amazing. And then you see someone yeah. else do something else. I'm like, I'm going to take that and do this. <laughs> Kind of thing, like, right? Yeah. And like, oh my God, you actually looked at my, you looked at my art. <laughs> you actually read my book. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, in the theme of like uh, grounding uh, a, a hero in there and grounding stories, how did you come about with Lady Killers? Um, how did you, how did that, that form? Hmm. Why? Well, I, <laughs> I was married at the time. So I don't know if that gives you any indication. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like next subject then that's it <laughs> um no he knows he was the inspiration he he takes he takes it with a lot of pride so right oh it's kind of um, like uh it's kind of like a uh, pink when she always uh writes a song it's about her husband all the time and he's just like go. well i was like well it makes us money why not <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's fine <laughs> no i you know i grew up uh like super traditionally uh, religious. I had to go to etiquette school. Right. Um, I was expected to be a housewife. And it was very, mm. you know, I always watched TV shows from the 50s and 60s and movies mm -hmm. and I identified with these poor locked up women who were just like, <laughs> you know, you try, you pretend to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, your true nature is just going to spill out and right. If you don't keep that balance just right, 
like a step for like a step for his wife kind of kind of thing. Yeah, and I just I really like the idea, and it was sort of brought on by the idea that women in World War Two uh, in, in the states got the opportunity to go out in the workforce, work right. and, and and care for their family and right. do things they typically hadn't been allowed to do before, and then you know as soon as the men came back, the women had to go back in the home. Right. And like, okay, yeah, but we'll give you like a new car and like a lawn and you'll be happy. <laughs> right. Picket fence and dog and right. all that stuff. <laughs> it's like, you know, it is like those old Coca-Cola ads, like that smile's not real. Right. Um, if you're trapped. And right. so, you know, that, that was just sort of the starting point of it, of right. um, the whole idea. And I just really love the juxtaposition it makes me laugh. So. Right. The, 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 what, what do you think that's kind of uh, gravitates people towards it? Because a lot of people really like it enough that Netflix picked it up, which we'll talk about in a little <laughs> bit. But um, what do you, what do you think that's uh, made uh, makes uh, indie comics a lot of people kind of gravitate towards it? Is it the groundedness of it, or is it the creativity of the artist and the writer, or what do you think that makes indie comics a little bit more different than say the mainstream ones that? Uh, the, the big two that were that so to speak yeah i think there's something really for me personally like there's something really exciting about uh yeah. being drawn to a book in a store i don't know anything about it mm -hmm. um and there's still maybe i'm delusional but there's still like a punk rock nature to it of right you know an indie book of basically like you know the editor if you're if it's creator own they're 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 facilitating they're helping but nobody's going to tell you no like it's yours yeah and, and i think human beings are just drawn to storytelling and when it's an indie book it could be anything who knows like right all the genres all the things mm -hmm. um but told with like a a sort of grimy right reality like here's a person that just made it right and now you're holding it in your hands and and you can escape into it and it's like it feels like there's no rules and yeah it's fantastic it, it, feel, it feels like a lot of people can just relate to uh the groundedness of uh indie books because in the last few years i don't know if you've noticed it too as well there's a big rise on indie books versus the mainstream kind of books i, I don't know if it's like a fatigue on on tights or or anything like that but it's it just it just it feels a lot better when you read an, an indie book there's a lot more soul into it does that does that make sense i'm not quite yeah, sure totally. <laughs> one of my favorite things is to to pick up an indie book by a professional that's been in the right. grind for years and they right. broke out on their own you're like ah oh, crap like what, <laughs> what right and so they're gonna exercise in this right um, yeah, just taking the sort of the the ropes that bound them away and just like right. have at it, whatever you want to do. Yeah, um, that's exciting. Yeah, that's why that's why I think like um, you know getting back to Jordy Baylor, I think that's why Redlands was was really good series. Is it's yeah, it's very grounded, but yet it was inspired by a uh, by a horror type kind of fantasy on it. It's it's, it's just really nice. Actually, that's the, fu the funny thing is, is that I that's how I knew about your art style because like you know, your art style has some similarities to Vanessa Del Rey's. Uh, Vanessa does a lot of wa watercolor, but there's distinct ways that she does lines. And then when I saw your arts, uh, I was just like, that looks kind of similar. And that that's how I kind of just started reading some of your stuff too as well because i don't know i don't know if that's uh that that correlates or anything but for no, me but me and vanessa were in a spider woman issue together actually when i first saw her work too she's really good yeah she's really she's really nice uh she, she's really good she's from miami too as well it oh. is kind of funny because that's um that's how i relate to a lot of artists i'm just like this this that relates to that it's like a six degree <laughs> separation <laughs> um when it comes to uh lady killers um do you see yourself possibly doing like a whole not not like a whole series but say like um like a continuing series up to say like a hundred something uh not books, but a hundred something issues. <laughs> like, do you see yourself doing something like that with Lady Killers? Maybe. I, I I like to take the approach of it of like seasons of a TV show. Mm -hmm. 
where I'm going to give you, even if you've never been exposed to the book, you mm. can pick uh, series two. And right. if you've read, then there'll be some extra stuff in there for you, but you should be able to pick it up and just enjoy it and have a good time. And right. um, I don't want something I love to ever feel like I have to, you right. know, shoot something out just to get it out. Um, I want, cause I, I always feel like you can kind of tell when the artist doesn't enjoy what they're not enjoying. It just kind of goes down a little bit kind of thing. Yeah. And I think since this is my baby, I don't want to right. disrespect her like that. <laughs> right. I think, I think that was like the opposite with, um, uh, just a side note. I think that was the opposite with, um, uh, with Watchmen when they mm. when they made alan moore do tight stuff he's like no i'm just gonna fuck it up and then it just became right. like the, mo the most amazing thing ever <laughs> um yeah. uh, i want to know uh so let's get in, uh, let's get into the film adaptation of this film uh first off diablo cody and blake lively wow like yeah like how did how did this come about like how, how like the dark horse just say yeah you know we're just gonna make this a movie click and you're just like um sure <laughs> yeah basically he's like well it makes me it makes me seem like such a luddite but i didn't know who blake lively was <laughs> <laughs> and they told me on the phone i'm like cool that's awesome and I'm like, blake, who's this person <laughs> Blake Lively. So why is he next? Why is she next to Ryan Reynolds? What is going on in here? I don't know who that guy is. Like he sells tequila or something. I don't... <laughs> no, I mean like I soccer knew... club or something. Right. <laughs> but how did that come about? Like, uh, did they just tell you that they're just picking your book up, or did they tell yeah. you that we're shopping your we're shopping this book and we're gonna see who bites? Yeah, I think that they um, they've been shopping it for a little bit. It'd been picked up by a few other people. Mm -hmm. Um uh I signed NDAs, but basically was right, like, right, no no of course no no of course communication broke down. I was yeah. not involved. Yeah. <laughs> involved. Right. Right. Uh, but I always tend to ignore all the Hollywood stuff just because mm -hmm. um I don't know. It's a lot of positivity of like right. and this is happening and everything's so great. Like, <laughs> Give me a check and like that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, I was talking to uh, Matthew Rosenberg, too, as well, in one of my uh, episodes as well. And his uh, book, uh, What's the Furthest Place from Here? And I, and I asked, I told him, hey, your, uh, your, your, your book is getting shot. He's like, yeah, that happens all the time. It's yeah. like, that's just the nature of Hollywood. Like, they just kind of grab any IP and they just kind of run with it. But it's until you see it in the screen or until some you know mm -hmm. something's signed in a dotted line it's not going to happen yet but yeah. in your in your case it's it's in it's going to happen at some point in time well, yeah we got the writer strike on uh, yeah right. oh uh, so that got that kind of just held it up a little bit i would yeah. say so i think right now it's just kind of um uh on pause you're right uh now, 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 you see a lot of like artists and writers like on Marvel movies, you know, how like, they have a special things and all that stuff in there. Um, how involved are writers and, and illustrators in those kind of movies? Because it just seems like they're just like, yeah, you know, they worked on it. Thank you. That yeah. kind of stuff, right? It, it depends on how good your lawyer is. Wait. <laughs> 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 well, not, not well. That explains a lot of things then, because because uh, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'm the only one. If you've seen like um, Into the Spider Verse uh, with Miles yeah. Morales, uh, amazing movie. But uh, Dan Slott is the, the only one who's credited as executive producer. I think it is. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm pretty sure uh, someone else created miles too and where is she like sarah picelli i'm just like yeah i i was looking for sarah picelli's name yeah which is weird i don't know i mean i've not worked with marvel uh enough to get to that to that point yeah. i think that's the know, hollywood part of it all kind of thing right uh it's always like uh, deals are made and struck but you know i think Comics has mm. a, a long history of getting kicked around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this, though. So you since let's just say everything, the, the writer strike is done and all that stuff, then everybody gets to work to Lady Killers. 
would you have your hand on outfits wise? Because I mean, like, I'm assuming that that's kind of because my 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 sister was an, an art major too as well. Wouldn't that be kind of like a dream kind of work for you? Because like you can design the outfits and everything and just be on set. Uh, yeah, that's not ever gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it, but it's just not how it works. Like you know. I would just bust the door in like Dan Dan Didio did and be like, I created this character. This is what it's gonna look like. <laughs> I know. Yeah, uh no, and uh I've I've had success like um I've been commissioned by Prada and uh, other places. Mm -hmm. Uh um, but I just Hollywood's it, it gives me a headache. <laughs> Then it gives people. everybody a headache. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like big stories, no results. Um, right, right. <laughs> um, and so I tend to just, you know, in one ear, out the other, like, all right, guys, sure. Like a little telling you a story. <laughs> um, oh, that's cute. Okay, let's right. see. <laughs> um so i i have to ask a question i have to ask this question before before anything and i'm gonna tread real lightly here because i know you, <laughs> you have an nda in here how did distillery come about like who who would who approached you to this uh who approached let's get started with you know somebody just came up to you and be like hey you want to be part of this yeah uh, uh david and chip uh, mm -hmm. emailed me and gonna hop on a phone call um it was weird. I'm like, okay, I don't know what you want to talk to me about. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, they pitched me the idea. And um, I just kept looking for a reason to say no. Um, but right. I couldn't find one. I was like, it, look, it looks really nice. I've, everything yeah. so far, the plan looked nice. And yeah, I, I didn't know who the other um, founding members would, would, would be until much later. And, uh, each right. name that came out, I was like, "Oh crap! Oh crap!" Like, right, uh, I know. I was, I looked at the <laughs> names. I was like, "Oh my god, these are what? What is going on in here? It's like a super team. What's going on here?" <laughs> it's really exciting. I, you know, we're all we all have like a WhatsApp chat going, mm -hmm. chit chat with each other, um, mm -hmm. sending memes all day to distract me from work. <laughs> All of a sudden, your WhatsApp thing says Brian Azarello enter. You're like Brian Azarello? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's insane the, the list that they have, and uh, yeah, they you know it, they really sold me on this huge emphasis on how the books are going to be printed and and right. the sizes and um, the care that it's going to be taken, and mm -hmm. it's not going to be a monthly grind kind of thing. It's it's. You know, which is perfect though, because that's that's the thing that kind of burns a lot of people out. It's the monthly thing, yeah. right? And I think, you know, for years I've really wanted to become a better artist. Um, mm. But you know, sometimes you're just grinding it out. Um, mm. Those challenges, those things that you want to try out, um, they just the opportunities just don't come. And mm. so, you know, my biggest fear is becoming really stagnant as an artist and yeah. I just want to keep getting better and better with right. every project. And I just found that that wasn't happening. And so this seems right. like the perfect opportunity for me to just play, try right. out some techniques, have a good time, tell some right. stories that are like right. super not okay for kids to read. And right. <laughs> uh, just be myself. Yeah. Right. Does it, uh, which actually yeah, it's funny that you, you, you pointed that out. Does it, does it get to that point you wake up in the morning that you're just like I f it feels like a job and you just don't want to do it anymore kind of thing every day <laughs> <laughs> no no I, I think uh, I I always feel that way like right and like at the apex of like the, the deadlines looming and I'm right I'm, right um I take a week off and I'm like oh I miss it yeah. I'm gonna go draw some more. Yeah, it's a nice day outside. I want to draw something else, kind of thing. Yeah, but like I can't. I think I'm gonna take like. I once had this amazing idea of taking three months off. Like, right. I, it's kind of like I'm gonna take art classes and I'm gonna mm -hmm. try really hard. Right. And next thing I knew, I was drawing another book. Like I can't. Right. It's like a, a battered wife syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's one of those things as a it, it's a blessing and a curse kind of thing, right? Yeah. And it's always a good problem to have, right? Like that you're always in demand, and always people will always want want your work and your and 
and writing for them kind of stuff right so um it yeah. sounds like it sounds like distillery will be a, a breath of fresh air for you then yeah i'm really excited i have no idea what's coming down the pike is as far as you know i'm still working on story ideas and mm -hmm. uh playing around but like just to know that i have that freedom of like right you know they're gonna pay me to play around and, and have right. it that's do you really do you already have stories in the pipeline for you, like in your mind, kind of thing? Yeah, I think I've got three or four that I'm kind of working on, but it doesn't really like. I won't click into one until I start doing all the doodles for it. Right. And then I know if I can't stop, then that's the right one. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, so you pretty much just write down anything or draw anything, and then something sticks. That sticks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, yeah. the one that you can't get out of your head. And I think that's why people are very drawn to your illustration and your work is just that you seem like you have a very fan viewpoint kind of stuff. Because that's how basically how fans work. And, the, you know, we read all the books and whatever sticks, that's what we go to. And that's mm -hmm. what we become fans of. Right. Like I know for me, you know, what it got me into um, comics is Michael Turner, Michael Turner's oh, art. Yeah artist and he draws the type of bodies that i wish i had and and it just yeah. like it, and it just looks amazing and that's where it leads me to tyler kirkham's art and then ian mm -hmm. church ian churchill's art that kind of stuff it just kind of uh, drives down so i think that's why a lot of people are very drawn to your work is that you're very grounded you it seems like you're writing as if you are a fan not just like work wise well, yeah. does that make sense yeah I I, and, I I adore comics. Yeah, a lot of people um, a lot of people kind of just draws and writes just for work nowadays. I don't know if you uh, I don't know if you notice something like that, and people kind of notice that, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it it can change from job to job. Like, I think if you're a jobbing artist, mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna do some crap jobs that you don't want right. to do, <laughs> and, and the art's gonna reflect it sometimes. Right. You know, um, like, oh, I hate this. Which is why I've never done a Green Lantern book. So. <laughs> <laughs> what Dan did it for some reason once everybody did. <laughs> it's like, am I, am I doing that? Am I doing Green Lantern now, Tom? Or what am I doing here? <laughs> um, uh, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, it's coming. Uh, what do you have uh, for for everybody? What's in store for? What do you have in store for everybody? Um, I'm bringing my dog. Not on the show. <laughs> And so I'm a little stressed out about traveling with her. <laughs> um, do you have an exclusive that uh, you're going to be presenting to people? Um, well, we're doing the distillery book. Um, oh, okay. So the book will be there at the booth. I think they'll have the variants. I'm not sure. They mm -hmm. also have that um, really adorable little red fox right. figurine. And right. I mean, I'm, I have not been to San Diego in years. And I've not been excited to go to San Diego for years. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first time I'm actually really looking forward to it. it to San be, Diego. Yeah. yeah. You, you'll be in a panel, right? You guys are doing a panel? Yeah. And okay. we're going to hang out. Like, it, mm -hmm. it, that sort of camaraderie of like, look at what, like, we've, we, like, oh, we're all in a company that's brand new. Um, right. This is weird. Let's have a good time and yeah. get to know each other. I think, I think yeah, every time that there's a new publishing company that comes out, a lot of people get very excited on it, especially with the type of talent that you guys have. I think that's going to be pretty amazing. I think it's going to be a lot of... I'm not quite sure if you're feeling the pressure a little bit because the, uh, you know, you do have a name uh, and it carries on. Like, do you feel kind of pressure to put something, really something that everybody want, wants to hear or wants to read kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I try not to think about it too much. I think I I try not to ever read reviews or see what people say. I think mm -hmm. I have a tendency where I can get really in my own head about that stuff. Right, right. Uh, and I'm really good at second guessing myself, like all the time. Yeah. And I don't need any help to tell me that um, yeah. I'm no good. So yeah. I stay away from all of it um right so when it comes to you know the next big thing i actually i'm not that nervous um mm -hmm. i think only just because i'm thinking like well i'm here to have a good time like of course so as long as i pick a project that like i'm enjoying it then that means for the next 
two, three years, I'll be working on something I enjoy. Maybe I'll have good days and bad, but Right, right. it's not going to be like, you know, feel like a regular job. Yeah. Um, one final thing, uh, a few final things, two final things before we go in, uh, before we go in here. Um, do you ever want to go back to Yara and probably do something that you thought that you could have done different? I, you know what, I, I love Yara. I have a real soft spot for her. I, I really enjoyed working with her as a character. Um, there was definitely a story I wanted to tell. Um, but I never, like, the plan for me was only ever being on six issues and then leaving Mm -hmm. um, to pass it on to somebody else um, because I don't like open-ended, Yeah. long long stories right um so you know at some point they told me well let's extend to 12 right and i'm like but i only wrote six like six. yeah <laughs> <And> <laughs> i I'm only like, have oh, six on me <laughs> an event happening now mm -hmm. this and this and this um and i really wanted to do like my take on the trials of pericles right uh with yara uh you know i will always love drawing her and i think yeah the right writer came along right I, I would do it again but i'm not i don't want to write for her ever again no no i mean like i, I think you're 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 going to be forever attached to yara floor you know yeah for the rest of your life i mean you're yeah the one who create you're literally the one you you, you were aries kind of thing molded her and everything right so you're literally you're really attached to her uh before we go i am so i'm canadian uh my you're canadian too Uh, I'm half Canadian. My mom's Canadian. You have Canadian. Okay, perfect. That's why I wanted to ask. Your pronunciation of your name. How many people mispronounce your name? Lots. 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 They say Joel. Joel, right? Joel, Jolie. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it's Joel, right? Yeah. And uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I, yeah. I, I, unless I have to like. Technically, my, it is Joel Marie. <laughs> Joel. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, Joel Marie. Yeah. Is it as a uh, your other? You said your other half would be you know, Quebec, Quebec, uh, Quebec no. uh, kind of thing, or just French Canadian kind of thing. No, my name is. So my dad named me after his ex girlfriend who was French Canadian. Oh, very nice. <laughs> He had a thing for Canadians. So, uh -huh. uh, my mom didn't find out until years later. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, my, that's. No, my mom, My mom's from Alberta. It's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not, not fancy. <laughs> so, are you going to be doing some uh, fan expos uh, in, up in Canada so, at some point in time and have like your name pronounced properly <laughs> at, at one point? <laughs> I did a show in Paris once and it was so weird to hear my name pronounced. Like, like a little tear just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you're like that is my name <laughs> <That's> amazing <laughs> well i would like to thank you ma'am for uh for being here thank you for taking the time i know convention crunch as well as deadlines this is you're, you're taking the time this has been really fun they've been it's been great um again thank you for being here do you have any last words for everybody out there um well first of all thank you for inviting me on and of course great questions um oh, i was a little bit nervous though so what no i'm always i'm always nervous when i'm interviewing like favorite artists and writers of mine <laughs> like i don't know if you heard the the scott williams interview that i had it was just, just <laughs> rattling right now <laughs> that's the best no, yeah I don't, I, uh do i have anything to promote oh batman the brave and the bold just came out right um in san then, diego comic con too as well you're going to be there uh booth, yeah. booth number sorry oh yes uh i'll be hopping all over the place i posted my schedule on instagram mm -hmm. and my instagram is just my name okay i got it first <laughs> for everybody else. so um yeah it's i'll be just friday and saturday and a little bit of sunday And a little bit of Sunday. There you go, guys. Um, and for me, as always, guys, I always end all my shows with the immortal words from Jay-Z. You guys could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here, guys, and we'll see you next time.